In this video, I'm going to show you how to join a Mac to a DSFW domain. Now, currently, Macintoshes are not supported with domain services for Windows, but there is talk of support for Macs in the future, and I'm going to help you get a head start on how to make that happen. Now, a quick overview of where, where we're at with this domain. You can see that all the services are running. Uh, we did a domain control list. We can see that these three partitions are part of the domain. So it's mapped to the O equals Novell. We have A and B. We'll just check users in each one of these containers. If I just to make sure that this is again on the DSFW server where SSH stands. So if we do an ID on user one, we can access it. Uh, user A1 and B1. We get the, R, the UIDs. We can see each of the UIDs. They're all part of the domain users group. So we get the GID information. Able to, to resolve. Now, this is the Mac. Let's see if we can do the same thing here. Just to prove that these users do not exist. Not one of them exists on this Macintosh. So we cannot ID these users. If we did an ID admin because this is the admin account, we are going to resolve that admin. This is not the eDirectory admin. This is the admin on this workstation. So A, user 1, A, and B were not able to resolve. Let's change that. Let's join this workstation to the domain. And specifically, let's make it so that we can resolve these these users. Joining the workstation to the domain is very easy to do. There's this one part as far as able to uh, resolve the users, ID the users. So we went into uh, the systems accounts. If we if we want to change anything here we just need to click the little lock and we can make any changes as we need to right in this section. We're just going to click join open directory utility, click on the active directory. Again, we're going to have to unlock it. Lots of logging in here. Okay, now active directory will edit it. And I've already got the information here. We just put our domain and the name of our workstation. Workstation needs to be a, a unique name. And just like joining any workstation to a domain, you got to make sure you can resolve. So make sure DNS is set up properly you're resolving to the proper DNS server now for joining if we just had this we could join the, the workstation to the domain and that part would work but we would not be able to ID the user and the user would not be able to log in on this box so in order to make that happen uh, well there's a, a setting and I'm just gonna go over everything here so you get an idea of what what happens here we have the user experience this part right here creates the mobile account so that when you log in it creates a a home directory on this workstation for you so that if you're you know away and not able to log into the directory you can still log into this workstation so that's what that that does you're going to want to make sure that the SMB is set up not AFP so making sure you're just using Samba and then you, that you're using bin bash for your default shell as far as administration, just you know your your domain name, and uh, if you want uh, users that are members of these two groups to be able to administer this workstation, then just you know enable this. It's not necessary, but it does make uh, administration a little easier for you. The key is that as far as being able to ID the users is the mappings, and the one that you're going to need to change is the UID attribute. You're going to make sh need to make sure this is UID number. Not I can't remember off the top of my head what it is by default, but it's not UID number. That's the one you're going to need to change. These you, they should already be there. You know, just mark it and and put this make sure this information is in. So you're using the GID number group and the UID number. Again, this is the one that you're going to have to change. Really, this is the only change that you have to do in order to make uh, d make uh, a Mac work with a DSFW domain. All right, let's uh, join this workstation. And by default, if you saw right there, it joins it to the c computer's container. That's where you want it to be. 
Oh, you know, I didn't log in properly. Let me bind it again. Let me just show you one more time here, too. So we have our domain name, and it's putting it in the computer's container. That's where you want it by default. If you change that location, be careful. You have password policies that are associated for your computers. Computers generate a random password when they log in uh, or when they join the domain, and they change that every 30 days. And if they're if the password policy doesn't agree with what the workstation wants to change the password to, that could be a problem. That's across the board. You need to keep that in mind. So there is a password policy set up on computers that will handle this. So if you're unsure, just keep it at computers. All right, as you see, we are now joined to the domain. And if we looked here, we can see there's the admin back so we are now joined to the domain let's go actually we'll come back here so again UID number is what is key well let's go ahead and close all this out here and if we ID User one comes back, A one, and then B one. So we can we can see the number, the UID number, that will match up with the UID number on our domain because it's reading the, the domain. So if we were to log out, we really on a Mac you can log out and log back in. You, I've done it where you haven't had to reboot. I would still recommend rebooting just to be safe. But you can log out, log back in, and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll show, actually show you that real quick, just what what it looks like here. I'll, let me uh, pause this, and we'll be right back. Okay, I rebooted the workstation just to be safe. I, I'd recommend doing that, but I have had success just logging out and logging back in, and, and it, will, it seems to work. But, again, I'd, I'd log out and log back in. Now you should see this other option here. Uh, this is our local user right here, admin, and now we have the other. If you don't see this, log in as admin, log back out, and then most likely you'll see it. This might be just a little timing issue of it, the workstation accessing the domain. So we'll log in as user1. As you see, logging in, this is that mobile account we're talking about. It's creating a local uh, home home directory on this this workstation is obviously local so let's go ahead and create that all right we are now logged in if I click on filer pops up and here's our home directory so we are now in the uh, in the in the domain so if I go in if I click on our domain controller here we are. Here's user one's home directory. He has a home directory. If I can go in, make a new folder. Just to kind of see, show that we did that. Let's uh, pull up a terminal. And by default, the terminal's in utilities. And. This. All right, just make that bigger. There we go. And if we go, let's see, SSH root logged in. This is actually as root. Um, let's just, I, I could have, I guess SSH is the user. Let's uh, change to the home directory. User1. We have the end title. If we change to the end title, we can see that new folder that we created. So there you go. We are in. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. You know, let me just go back up one more just to show we'll create another folder folder 2 
folder too. So there you go. Workstation joined to the domain. The user is able to log in, access his home directory on the server. Everything is working beautifully. So I hope this is helpful to you. And uh, you know, please l uh, let us know if this is something that you're interested in. Thanks.